So what is value engineering? That's what I'd like to spend the next few minutes talking about. Now, it's basically a review of a project carried out by a multidiscipline team working together in a multi-day workshop to look for ways to increase the value of a project. And what does increasing value look like? Well, it's finding a way to get all the essential functions accomplished at a minimum cost. One of the characteristics of the process is that a team that's brought together to do this review has had no prior involvement in the project. So they bring a totally fresh perspective to, to bear. VE started to evolve in World War II, when out of necessity we had to look for ways to accomplish the essential functions by commodities that were no longer available. Like we lost our access to all the rubber plantations in Southeast Asia. We had to find some other materials that would perform the same function. Well, it, what, the value engineering process started to be applying in a serious way in the wastewater treatment field in the 1970s when the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency started requiring that value engineering be done on all wastewater projects that had federal grant money involved and had a cost of over $10 million. I was actually retained by EPA in the 1970s to write the original workbook on how you do value engineering of wastewater projects. They then hired us to evaluate 93 projects that were value engineered to look at what worked and what didn't work. And I've been doing value engineering myself for the last 40 years. So just some tips to offer based on this collective experience. Well, the first thing that's absolutely essential is you've got to have the right team. Usually there are four to seven team members, depending on the size and complexity of the project. And they need to be people that have all the relevant expertise that's required for the project. They also need to be sort of a special breed of consultant. They need to be people that can move quickly, are creative, can quickly evaluate the merits of an idea as to whether it's worth pursuing further. It's best not to have direct competitors of the designer on the VE team. You can put yourself in the designer's shoes if you look across the table and see a competitor uh, analyzing your project. It might put you on the defensive. That's best to avoid. It's also best to avoid having all the team members come from one firm. So even though that firm may not be a competitor, what you can find is you end up with a VE resulting in a design philosophy of firm A versus the design philosophy of firm B, which is not a good situation either. Timing-wise, when do you do value engineering on a project during design? Well, this evaluation we did in 93 projects, we found that the best returns were obtained when the VE was done at 10 to 30 percent of the design. That's been my experience as well. The second best point is about 60 percent of the design completion. And on, on many large complex projects, the VE is done at both points, 10 and 30 percent and at 60 percent. The workshop is the real heart of the, of the process. It's a very structured process. For most projects, it's five days in duration. It starts Monday morning, ends Friday night. If the project is smaller, it may be a somewhat shorter duration, but five days, 40-hour workshop is typical. And it consists of the phases that you see here, the five phases of a VE workshop. The information phase actually starts somewhat before the workshop. Information on the project is gathered, summarized, distributed to the team members, so they arrive at the first day of the workshop with some idea, what's this project all about? And they probably can't help themselves, they probably started to generate some ideas uh, prior to the workshop. And the workshop opens with a presentation by the designer and the owner, so there's a chance for interaction between the VE team and both of those parties, and so they get some background on why the project is where it is. And if there are any constraints on the project, things that the, the VE team simply must uh, stay within the lines on, like maybe there's no extra space for added site acquisition. If there are any of those constraints, those are laid out so the team doesn't waste their time. Then the next steps that you see here are, are followed for the balance of the workshop. There's a brainstorming period where ideas are thrown out, just as the name implies, creative ideas of what might be done to increase value. No dumb ideas at this point. What looks like a really crazy idea may actually stimulate a very good idea by another team member. When the brainstorming is complete, the team goes back through every idea on the brainstorming list and says, is this idea worth considering any further? That's the evaluation phase. That short list that comes and survives that process is then investigated. Each of the ideas is investigated in detail during the workshop, and the team then decides which of those ideas are they going to recommend to the owner and the designer for further consideration. And the VE report is prepared. There's usually a debrief on the Friday afternoon informal presentation. Here's what's going to be in the report. Do you understand what uh, any questions that you have about 
clearing up any understanding of what any of these ideas are. They aren't debated at that point. They're just explained, and then the report is submitted. Then the owner decides which of these ideas am I going to accept, which of the ideas I'm going to reject, and which of the ideas I'm going to take with and run with, I'm going to modify them uh, beyond what the VE team had suggested. Every case I've been involved in, the savings had exceeded the cost of the VE workshop, and one of the, the best uh, databases I know of in that regard has been compiled by the Hampton Road Sanitation District. This is a large regional wastewater agency in Virginia and has many large treatment plants. And they've compiled statistics on their VEs, which they do on all their major designs, usually two workshops on each of the major plants. And they found that for every dollar they spend on value engineering, they recoup $17 in project savings. And I'd be happy to talk with you about your project and its specifics as to whether VE may be applicable or not. I look forward to hearing from you.